Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always. And today we're going to take a look at the new AGM-88C high-speed anti-radiation missile or harm delivery modes in the F-16C Block 50 Fighting Falcon. The Block 50 was purpose-built for the Wild Weasel role, and the new pre-briefed and equation of motion submodes for the position master mode really gives the Wild Weasel her fangs. These two new modes are really going to allow DCS World pilots to dig deep into the Wild Weasel mission sets and tactics, and allow mission makers to create more complex IADs to make their weasels say, you gotta be shitting me. The beautiful new clouds in DCS World 2.7 make a potent combination in conjunction with SAMs. Randy Cunningham, the only US Navy ace of the Vietnam War, constantly boasted that a SAM would never bring him down. On the mission that made him an ace over North Vietnam on the 10th of May 1972, the SA-2 that brought him down was an unseen one. Keep your eyes peeled, look for any smoke trails, and trust your raw equipment out there. And before we get started, let's go ahead and plug Leading Edge Supplements. Their cognitive and energy enhancing supplement, Severe Clear, helps you stay sharp in both the real and virtual cockpit while conforming to all USAF and FAA regulations on pilot supplementation. Use code SPUD for 15% off of your order. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. Okay guys, welcome back to the office of the F-16C Fighting Falcon. As we go over the brand new pre-briefed and equation of motion modes for delivering your AGM-88C harms onto enemy threat emitter radars. We're stood off just south of our target at Palmyra Air Base, waiting for release from Red Crown to conduct our seed mission against an SA-6 and an SA-3 battery. But first, we've got to make sure that we have our aircraft completely set up and ready to go for combat and to employ these brand new modes of delivering our harms. So first thing we're going to do is, of course, we're going to set up our cockpit. We're going to fence in, make sure we've got master arm turned on. We're going to clean up our HUD picture a little bit, get rid of the airspeed and heading tapes. And in order to make sure that pre-briefed as well as equation of motion harm delivery modes work correctly, we need a waypoint situated directly on top of our enemy threat emitters. We can see our SA-3 and our SA-6 site do not actually have a waypoint on top of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to press the steer point button on our ICP and we're going to use the increment button to increment up to a blank waypoint, waypoint 4, and we're going to take a look at our kneeboard. A special forces team on the ground down there near Palmyra Airfield has given us the coordinates of the SA-6 and the SA-3 batteries. So first we're going to dobra down, and we're going to enter north, 3, 4, 3, 4, 2, 5, 8, and enter to create our latitude for this waypoint. Our longitude is going to be easting 0, 3, 8, 1, 9, 1, 3, 9, enter. Dauber down again for the elevation, and our elevation is directly at 1,296 feet of elevation. We can now hit return and we're currently going to use our increment button to reselect steer point 4 or else our steer point and azimuth information on our HUD is not going to be completely updated and it will take us in a giant circle trying to chase that new steer point that we just created. Keep in mind that as you use the pre-briefed and equation of motion modes for your harms, you are going to need to have a steer point near within about 10 to 20 nautical miles of the actual SAM site you're trying to hit. Next, we're going to go ahead and go into air to ground mode. We're going to ensure that our two AGM-88s are turned on. 
We're then going to come over to our weapon page on our left MFD. And we're going to change over from the default pass mode over to the master mode position mode. And then we can cycle through range unknown, pre-briefed, and equation of motion on the center uh, OBS button. We, of course, want to bring it to pre-brief mode for our first missile shot. We're then going to adjust our table to engage an SA-6 track radar. So that's going to be table three for the older style, more Cold War 1970s type uh, air defense systems. We're then going to come down to the middle OSB button, and we're going to ensure that the six is highlighted. We can also go through our different stations and select a specific harm for a specific type of engagement type. And Red Crown has now told us that we have permission to push to the target area and engage those SAM sites. We'll go over back to our HSD. And we'll go ahead and kick the autopilot off. And I highly recommend that you guys watching this at home seriously try to practice making tight turns while losing no altitude. Nice level turns all the time. It is absolutely the key to flying much better, more professionally, and employing your weapons a heck of a lot better in DCS world. Now we're looking to fly on our azimuth steering line towards our target area. We start to roll out. There we go. And we can see now that our steer point four is directly on top of our SA-6 and our SA-3 site. And the cross over the top of it means that we have a SPI directly on top of those sites. Whoop, looks like we need to trim out our jet a little bit. We can now see our range bar showing us that we're getting closer and closer to maximum range for a harm shot. And we're going to ensure, yep, now that we are within maximum range, we now have a optimum loft angle, a minimum loft angle, and a maximum loft angle symbology on our azimuth steering line. We can see this is going to be the altitude that we're going to be firing the missile at at optimum loft angle at the airspeed we're currently at as well as the optimum loft angle itself of 19 18 17 degrees the range out here is showing the range bar at 80 nautical miles so we're about halfway ish down maybe a little bit more so probably between about 40 and 60 nautical miles and like i said in the intro to this video these no new modes for engaging targets with harms is going to make the F-16 an absolute beast when it comes to employing harms and conducting seed missions. You guys are going to be able to go up against more and more complex air defense systems as well as be able to come out on top. The way harms loft is pretty darn cool and amazing and you get some pretty long shots against these targets. So just like in air to air combat, we want to start increasing our altitude. So that way our harm will be able to travel at its furthest possible distance because it doesn't have to push through a bunch of dense air at low altitude. Let's level off here so that way we can show you guys a real good loft.
You can fire the missile by pressing your weapon release button at any time when you're between the minimum and maximum loft angles. So if you do get surprised by, say, a MiG, you can, of course, fire the missile whenever you can get it off and then go defensive against, say, that MiG-29 that snuck up on you. And at this point, we're just cruising. I'm getting closer and closer to the missile site before I fire the missile. Just for the sake of being able to get the SAM to lock me up, we now have SA-6 nails. The signal's pretty darn strong, which is fantastic. Flying through a little cloud bank here, which is absolutely off. There we go. We're gonna go full afterburner. We're gonna come up to optimum lofting angle. on the azimuth steering line and magnum. We're then gonna come off to the left. I prefer coming to the left due to that left-hand missile firing first. So that way when we go into equation of motion for the second harm shot, the missile is already on our right-hand side and it can make a nice right-hand turn towards the SA-3. Now we're flying right on the edge of the maximum engagement range of that SA-6 making sure that he does shoot at us so that way, or at least keeps us locked up, so that way that harm has an awesome trajectory right down onto the missile site. Look at that. Coming down almost vertically onto the SA-6. I'm not employing any chaff. There we go, there's a launch. The missile should be. There we go, that's perfect timing. We can see approximately how many seconds we have to impact. And kaboom. We got a good hit on the SA-6 tracking radar, which is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and duck under this cloud bank here. And we can see that we no longer have SA-6 nails. We're going to go ahead. and spawn the SA-3. We're gonna go into Equation of Motion. We're gonna go to the SA-3. And we are pretty darn close to it. Looks like we're probably a little bit too close at this point for the SA-3 to try and lock us up. So we're going to go ahead and break away from Palmyra Airfield down there at Steer Point 4. And see if we can't get that SA-3 to lock us up. These new modes for delivering harms is going to definitely allow... DCS World Pilots to practice more and more advanced seed. At this point, we're kind of wild weaseling the SAM site, trying to get that SA-3 to hopefully lock us up. His search radar is definitely active. On our HUD for equation of motion, we can see that our steer point is more than 99 degrees to our left. Optimum lofting angle or optimum altitude that we're going to shoot at our optimum loft angle is 21,000 feet. Our range bar is showing our range to the target area. We've got our minimum lofting angle and our maximum lofting angle as well on our azimuth steering point. I'm going to go ahead and turn around cold away from the SAM site again and try to come hot onto the SA-3 battery once again to bait him into shooting at me.
The SA-3 is an older generation SAM than the SA-6. While still a very potent system, it definitely does not have nearly as advanced electronics as the SA-6, and thus this might be why we're seeing it have a bit of a hard time actually locking us up. So we're outside of the threat rings for the SA-6 and the SA-3, so we're going to go ahead and fly inbound into them a little bit further here. We're not going to fly directly onto the SAM site, so that way we can evade any SAM launches a lot easier and make it harder on him to hit us, while simultaneously being able to demonstrate the equation of motion mode for delivering your AGM-88s. There we go. That is an SA-3 right there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to launch our harm. He's going to make a good right-hand turn and he's going to loft. Absolutely perfect. That's what we want. Looks like we broke the lock. There's a Sam coming up at us. We're going to turn on around the backside to evade this guy. And kaboom. We took out that SA-3 pretty darn quick with that equation of motion AGM-88C harm shot. We could see that it took a pretty darn hard right hand turn and lofted itself so that way it could make up for some of that energy that was lost when it came to that right hand turn and then it probably came down very much vertically onto that SA-3 tracking radar just like the same way we took out that SA-6. Like I said earlier, this is going to be an absolute game changer for how seed operations are conducted by F-16 pilots and DCS World pilots as a whole going forward. As mission makers, we're going to be able to create more and more and more complex air defense networks to challenge players more and more and more now that they have the proper tools to engage these complex integrated air defense networks now. I am absolutely hyped for these two new modes. It is very, very cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give a like and a subscribe. And if you were just as freaked out as I was when you saw that SA-3 coming through the cloud, definitely let me know in the comments below because whoo, that guy got a little bit too close for comfort. Alrighty guys, fly safe, make sure that you're under positive control from ATC when you fly through these gorgeous clouds and stay healthy out there, guys.